What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I'm Glenn Martin here with my coach, James Haskell. In this episode, we're going to discuss some pretty exciting, surprising uh, news coming out of the the mouth of Adam Schefter. Uh, mm -hmm. This was it this afternoon or it was this yeah, yesterday? Yeah, looks like it. Okay, this afternoon. So uh could be some exciting news on the horizon. But before we get into it, take a second, click the subscribe button, give us a like, and click the notification bell so we can keep you up to date on all your Ravens news. But Jimbo, what do you got there for us? Uh, and what's, what's new with the Ravens? Yeah, absolutely. We'll let Adam Schefter uh, release the news. And I apologize, this was actually yesterday, so I did misspeak there. Um, but it looks like the Ravens have offered a contract to to one Odell Beckham. We'll hear what Adam has to say about it. Junior, they presented him their own offer. We'll see start this over. The interim, the Baltimore Ravens have met with Odell Beckham Jr. They presented him their own offer. We'll see which Odell Beckham Jr. finds more interesting. But it certainly sounds like it's the Jets, it's the Ravens, maybe the Rams still would have an interest. But those at this point in time would be the obvious landing spots mm. for Odell Beckham Jr. and what has been one of the longest free agent recruitments that we've ever seen. <laughs> wow. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. The Baltimore Ravens, Glenn, believe it or not, have made an offer to one Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, how the turntables. Like, I mean, think about this, Glenn. Think about how many... I mean, think about Odell's journey in general. Like, forget, like, the not forget, but, like, let's not even include the Ravens for a second. Just all that that that's you know, transpired throughout his career to get to this point where just like Adam said, he's the longest stage of like free agency luring. He's got to feel like a college kid, mm -hmm. right? Like just getting all these, you know, offers, figure out who to commit to and stuff like that. And now the team that I would bet a lot of people did not suspect would be interested in Odo Beckham Jr. The Baltimore Ravens, Glenn, what are your thoughts now that it's more than just news Mm -hmm. Like it's more than just talks and visits and, you know, turn over every leaf and things, but the Ravens have made an actual uh, offer to Odell Beckham Jr. What are your thoughts? Well, my first thought is that Todd Munkin <laughs> must have a good relationship with Odell Beckham, must have a lot of respect for Odell Beckham. And he must think that he's not the distraction that oftentimes the media paints him to be. I, I don't think there's any way the Ravens would be going, you know, this hard at pursuing Odell Beckham if Todd Munkin didn't give him an absolute fantastic endorsement like he must have gone back to Harbaugh and said look all the complaints that I've ever heard was the guy wants the ball and if that's your biggest complaint that you want the ball that's not the worst thing you know it's not like this guy is just full of of distractions for other various reasons the guy just wants to participate and wants to be a focal point in the offense which I think if he came here that wouldn't be a problem uh, because yeah. outside of him, Bateman and and Duvernay, there's not a whole lot there. I mean, and Nelson Aguilar now, uh, but there's still there's not a lot there in, in, as far as you know people blocking him from getting his targets. I think everybody will have an opportunity. So that that's my first thing is that Todd Munkin must really like the guy, and that a lot of the media portraying of him being this this um, disruption in the locker room might be. Just that, just the media portraying that it might not actually be the case. And Todd Munkin has worked with him, and so he would be one who would know. My my next thing is, I, I know it's it looks like it's down to the Ravens, the Jets, and then an outside shot currently of the Rams. Now I'm not saying mm -hmm. I'm discounting any other teams because I, I would not be at all shocked to see a team swoop in in the eleventh hour and, and snatch him away because we saw. Darius Slay just came out and said he was this close to being a Raven. The Ravens gave him what he wanted. But he ultimately went back to the Eagles, mm -hmm. so I, I'm not ready to just you know start thinking it's just us, it's just them. But Jimbo, let me kick this back to you. If you're Odell Beckham Jr., is your it, like is not one of your first questions who's going to be throwing me the ball? And if you're considering signing with the Ravens, should that make me as a Ravens fan think, well, maybe they're telling him it's more likely Lamar is here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's one of his first questions. I also want to uh, uh, point out that not only, so from a relationship standpoint, not only does he obviously have a relationship with Moncton, but he also has a relationship with Rashad Bateman. So that also helps as far as, 
the recruitment and the him feeling, you know, the aspect of feeling comfortable and playing with guys he wants to play with. I think those things matter for everyone, certainly for Odell Beckham Jr. But when you're talking about who's throwing the football, I think that's priority number one. Forget the relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is interesting to think about what the Ravens are telling him. I think, like you said, right now, the answer is every intention that we have is that Lamar Jackson is our quarterback. Yeah. Right. Uh, And we're acting under that assumption. And unless, (coughs) you know, he gets a... (laughs) It, what's a one I cough. I know <laughs> unless he, uh, you know, unless some team comes out of the woodwork with an incredible, ridiculous, you know, historic, uh, breaking deal or history breaking deal, or he wants to sit out of $32 million. Lamar Jackson's our quarterback. Like there's really no other way around it. So, Oh man. And, and look, this is the other thing too. It's kind of a bummer. We talked about this in our last show when we talked about Odell Beckham jr. It's that, I, I wish it was a multi-year deal, Glenn, because, you know, I want him to come here, first of all. But if he does, I'm kind of tired of the one-year deals with our receivers. I want some consistency in our receiver room. And it's a bummer that he's looking for, like, a one-year $15 million deal. I know initially he was looking for a multi-year deal. But it's a bummer to me only because I wish that we could get a few years uh, with a guy in our offense consistently like that. Um, but I think that the reason they're doing that is because, you know, he might be like, look, if Lamar's not here the following year, I don't want to be here type thing right right? so he might be thinking that but let me ask you let me ask you this what do you think's going through odell beckham's head like outside who's throwing the football Mm -hmm. so you know what do you what else do you think he's considering do you think that like new york really matters to him that much as far as like playing for the jets do you think that aaron Rodgers is a draw like what do you think's going through his head yeah i mean i think it's a lot of things I, i i'm not big on the whole big market thing anymore i think nowadays with technology the way it is social media the way it is i don't think you necessarily have to be playing in a big market to get the endorsements and all that stuff so i i'm not so sure that new york thing is a big draw i i do think you know he looks at aaron Rodgers, goes oh aaron Rodgers is going to be there but is the do you look at aaron Rodgers being a jet as more of a certainty than lamar being a raven yeah right now Okay, so if that's the case, Just then I think that's a draw. So toxic in 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 Green Bay. There's no way Aaron is a Packer, right? right There's just simply right. no way. Yeah, and he's already come out and and made it pretty clear he wants to be a Jet. So that's got to be enticing because if you're a guy, here's I, I think the big thing for Odell Beckham is he does want twenty million. He does think he's worth that type of money, but right now he sees that that's not his market. So he's I, I think. That one-year deal, Jimbo, isn't necessarily what he wants. I think he's settling for a one-year deal that's closer to the $20 million he wants rather than a multi-year deal that's probably further than that $20 million a year he wants. But that might be the way the Ravens can get in with an offer. Yeah. Maybe they are offering a multi-year deal that's slightly less than the one for 15 that we're hearing and that he might consider that the better option than the one for 15. And it, because what happens... Here's the thing. What happens if Aaron Rodgers gets hurt? Or what happens yeah. if, you know, th- that, that's the one area they need to work on is their offensive line. Looks like they got skill position talent around him, but not so sure if they have the line to protect him. If he gets hurt, it's Mr. Wilson coming in. And then mm-hmm. are, are you really in a better position to try and, you know, make yourself some, some big time money after that one year prove it deal? I'm not so sure, but so he I might say... Up. What's that? Depend on I wouldn't want to depend on Zach Wilson to, to make no. me money. Ugh. Exactly. So maybe he's thinking, man, this is because Aaron Rodgers to me is you can't count on him past this year as in right. New York. All right. This is this it's a one year. He's a mercenary at this <laughs> point, one year at a time. Yeah. So maybe he goes, yeah, maybe I do want the stability of, of maybe a three year deal. And and they're they're being pretty convincing. They think Lamar's gonna be back. That could be, but let me ask you this, Jimbo. If he ultimately Say Odell Beckham decides I'm going to follow Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to be a Jet, and we hear tomorrow that he's he's been signed. Do you do you look at the fact that the Ravens, because look, they said they wanted to address the wide receiver room. Up to this point, only Nelson Aguilar is the only thing they've done. Would hearing that they've presented an offer to Odell Beckham, who, which by the way, he, he, there's nobody, there's not a lot out there. Would yeah. that be enough to go? Well, they're trying. Like, or do you need no, them no. to make D-hop. moves? D Hop is the like that's you take your focus and you say Odell is dead to me. On to the next. Let's get this trade done. Something has to happen. Like, and I I agree with you. Like, we've been in defense of this front office on them trying. Yeah, forever. But 
look, you got Anquan Bolden some way, shape, or form, right? It happened to be through a trade, and guess who it was from? Arizona. Arizona. So, look, you got to do what you got to do at some point. If the draft mm-hmm. isn't working, what's the saying in baseball? Like, you buy you buy bats, you, you develop arms. You, you buy pitching, you grow the bats. Okay, so, yeah, right? there you go. The Orioles do the opposite somehow, right? They, like... Yeah, I guess it well, depends on who you ask. All right, guess what am I trying to say? The Orioles develop bats, but they can't yeah. buy pitching. Well, it's anyway, hard to buy pitching, yeah. Yeah, the point is, is that the Ravens need to stop trying to develop the receiver and just go buy one. Like, whatever you got to do. It it worked with, yeah, I mean, it worked with Anquan, um, and he's really been our bat, our last. Oh, Steve Smith was another one that was super. I yeah. mean, he was productive here, even no at the doubt. end of his career. For sure. Um, cer- certainly more productive than anyone else we got on. I, Steve Smith, if he played today for a four games, might be our number one, like might be the best receiver we had on. For four games, I'd give him. Oh, you mean like current? Right now. Yeah, got you right out of the four suit. games. Yeah, oh for right sure, out four games. Like, dude. So I'm oh, Rashad might have an argument there, but I'm just saying him. four games, four games. <laughs> That's it. After that is Rashad. But uh, so yes. But, it, but let me just say what this means because <laughs> it has there. There's ramifications here. The Ravens have a projected six million in current cap space, six point yep. one to be more specific. If it is that one year deal, well then we're gonna have to see some more departures. Yeah. If it's a multi-year deal, maybe they can get the number down. But we got to also remember that the rookies are coming. You got to have money for the rookies. You got to have money for the what ifs, you know, yeah. the injuries. So yeah. it's pretty clear that the Ravens are going to have to do something to get some more cap space, whether even wonder, they sign them or not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I wonder if an extension of Duvernay could be one way. I know that he has, what, a $5 million hit this year? Five or six, four, yeah. It was like in between four and five, something like that. But if you extend him and and – you know what I mean? You, you give him a decent sign off as a, as a number three guy, special teams guy, things like that. His price tag is going to be crazy. You make that first yeah. year. You know, I'm just trying to think of ways initially to to free up some more cap. I think there's still some moves they can make, but I think I agree with you. Inevit- inevitably, there might there there looks to be some additional departures or restructuring. You know, uh, I'm trying to be positive Stanley, here. But, Humphrey, yeah, no, they could yeah, exactly. they could do something with Stanley we'll and Humphrey. Do that. If if Lamar gets a deal done. That would also help, at least in the interim, like in, in the short year, um, in, in the excuse me, the first year. So I still think there's some things they can do. Either way, though, I'm happy that I, I, a move needs to be made, but I'm happy that they're putting offers on the table. I think Eric Eric DeCosta is done playing around. We're we got to get a guy here. It's just that simple. We have to. There's no more room for for you know margin of error. It is gone, right? And we tried the whole Bateman staying healthy and hold your breath thing, and it didn't work. So why do it again? <laughs> yeah, it's got. It, it, I tell you, it would be frustrating for me because it looks like the Ravens might have to either overpay for a guy like Odell, yep. or give up more than they want from a cat from a you know draft capital standpoint. But I just don't know how they can make trades with five current picks unless unless they do a draft day trade where they trade back in their fir- with their first round pick, yeah. acquire more picks, and then acquire Hopkins or someone like him on draft night yeah if you do something even say you do it the prior to draft night right you take hopkins you give what did uh what were they talking about who oh the brandon cooks deal was a fifth and a sixth i think is what it was and and it's fifth and something i want to say fifth and a sixth but the point is that what they're saying is that uh deandre seems to have about the same market right now not based on talent simply because he knows they know that he doesn't want to be there so it's kind of tanked his value a little bit so with that in mind, if you do something like that, maybe a little more, and like, and then, and then on trade day, like you said, you 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 consider him your first round pick. You trade right. out of the first, right? And then you you like you said, you accumulate some of those picks you gave Get up, two so, twos or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, a, a, a two and a five, uh, depending on how drastically you know your move back is and things like that. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see. But man, I'm for Odell Beckham Jr. being here. How, are you you for it? Oh, certainly. I mean, I think I, you're right. Moncton's giving him the sign off. And I think that's huge for me and my vote of confidence. If yep. Moncton wants him here, that makes a lot of sense to me. No doubt. Because he be, he would know firsthand because look, times weren't good in Cleveland. Cause that's my worry. Like I, I think if things were going well, everybody's happy, no matter who right. you are. But right. I worried about the times where you go on a two, three game losing streak and offense is is not hitting on all cylinders what you know that was my concern is are we going to see some social media posts but 
Todd Monkin was with Odell when it was at its worst, when Baker Mayfield was just, you know, throwing the ball to the other team and into the dirt and, and guys were frustrated. And if he saw it firsthand and still signs off, then yeah, I, I'd be all for it. But I still look at it as a long shot. In my opinion, I still think the Jets are the, the hands down favorite because mm-hmm. of the perception of, of, of Baltimore's passing attack, even though Greg Roman is gone. I still think it's a long shot, but I'm hopeful that they make a move and get it done. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think is a long shot. Do you feel like it's likely? Um, are you excited or you don't want Odell Beckham uh, around? Give us all your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll talk to you guys soon. See you. Yesterday does not matter. You're looking forward to today. I'm looking forward to being a Raven. What are they getting? Everything out of me. They're going to get a Super Bowl out of me. Need that.